This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today, we're talking about stability. Let's get to it. So before we jump into today's video, I just gotta say welcome to all of you fantastic new people who have showed up to this channel. It has been flooded recently between Cyberpunk and between Valheim. We have gotten so many new people to the channel. So thank you all so incredibly much for all of the support to all the new people and all of the fantastic and amazing people who have been around for ages. Thank you so much for the continued support. Okay, so now let's talk about stability. First thing we're going to talk about is the height limit. So it doesn't matter now, I know many people pointed this out to me and I did not realize it at first, but your workbench seems to be a sphere. So if we grab this and we grab a building piece here and we stand inside the circle. So see this circle here? So that circle is not a cylinder. It is a sphere. So if we build towards the edge, we're going to build out of that area quicker than if we build towards the center. So if we just slap that down there and then we start to build upwards. You can see here, we've already ran out of the area. If I jump, I cannot place another one because I'm jumping out of the sphere. So that's something to keep in mind, but Beyond that, even if I was to slap down another workbench at one of these areas here, so you can see I built all the way up like that, even if I was to, for example, build a flat piece here and build another workbench, I could not build higher. And that is because we have reached our limit. Now, you can tell you have reached the limit by the colors. So if I highlight over this, you can see that it is blue. You can see this is blue. From what I can tell, blue means foundation. Blue means it's touching the ground and it has a 100% support. Then as we move away, you can see the color changes and it becomes green and then it it's green again and then it starts to turn a little more yellow and then it turns to yellow and then it turns to orange. And then we can demonstrate from here. Then it goes from orange to an orange is red to red and then super red. Now past this super red here, you cannot continue to build. So if I snap another piece on there and we take a look at it, you'll be able to see it goes to the colors as the game registers the stability and then it falls off. Those top pieces that you see up there on the half walls and the full walls, are red. You cannot build on top of them. The same thing if we take a look at this stone structure here. So the stone walls, the big chunky ones, that's as high as they're going to go. If you try to build on top of that, it says no. It, what's interesting though, is I was able to get a little bit higher with the half walls than I was the whole big chunky walls. So if you take a look there and that is this one right here, so the two, the two by ones, I was able to get just a little bit higher. You can see the difference there, the height difference there with the two by ones before I started to hit that you can't build any more limit. Now, as far as the foundation pieces for stone, uh, they are not meant to be built as floor pieces. If we take a look here, it says no. It doesn't even matter that the color is green. It just immediately says no. And if I remove this, uh, that one breaks as well. So they're not meant to be floor pieces. Now you can use this strategy here to your advantage. And it's something we're going to talk about here in a minute. And we'll come back to this. You can use this to great advantage. Okay. But like I said, we'll cover that in a minute. Now I want to talk about building out from a piece and how it judges how far you can build out from a piece. So it looks like I got to repair these because they took rain damage and there's not much I can do about it building out here. I'm not trying to cover all this up and it's bothering me. Um, so with your 
piece here. So you can see that we have this one here, it's blue. And then it immediately goes to green on the next piece that we snap to it. Now I can't tell if these are based off of a weight that we can't see kind of like seven days to die is, or, or if it's a count limit, I'm not 100% sure, but, um, I'm going to talk to you about everything that I've discovered and then you can kind of maybe we can discuss it in the comments what you guys think is the situation here. So you can see this one's blue. Well, I stack a ceiling piece right on top of it that is immediately green and then as we come out here, they slowly change. Same thing with this one. So this is the one I want you to really pay attention to because this is where it's going to get, you're going to be like, oh, that's strange. So we have the blue one here and then I build out one, two, three, Four, and now I can't stick any more to the end. It will go through the colors and then break. So can't stick any more to the end. So what's interesting though, is if we remove this, we'll get to that in a minute here, and we look at these. So we have blue, green, green, and then we take a look at the top here. Let's get away from that sun glare. We have one, two, three. So we have an extra one here because we're, we've built less walls. So we've lost stability for our ceiling pieces because we built wall pieces. And if we continue to build wall pieces, it will become less and less as we build them. So if I jump up here and we build, let's build two more wall pieces. So there we go, we got two more. And now you can see it's yellow that one just turned to the dark orange and then this one's going to go through and change color and now that one's red and now it should this one should break as soon as it realizes yeah there it goes so as you build up you also lose stability out which is relatively interesting now the other interesting thing comes from the support beams. So you may think, okay, well that's cool, but I can just slap a support beam on there and I should be fine. Now, if we snap a support beam to the side here, you can see that that's gonna go dark green and then it's gonna lighten back up to where it was. So if we just highlight over this and then we delete and we immediately look at that, you can see it did not change color uh, or change to a better, better color, I guess you could say, or more stable color, it changed right back to what it was after it registered. Now we have it on there and if you think, okay, well that's supported now, I should be able to add another piece on the end. And if I do, you can see that it breaks. Same thing if we, I know somebody's gonna say something, so I'm gonna do it. If you add two on there, you're like, oh, it's gotta be super stable now. But no, if I add a piece on there and then we patiently wait, it breaks. Now I'm not breaking that, I'm just highlighting over it. I'll do it and immediately look away. You can see now it just broke instantly. Okay, so how do the support beams work then if that doesn't actually give us support? Well, from what I can tell, they reset your support based on how many out they are and the part that they're touching. And let me see if I can explain that a little bit better here. It's kind of hard for me to, you'll see. So this one here is our one that's connected directly to our foundation piece. We're going to call this our foundation piece because I'm calling blue foundation. So that's connected to our foundation piece. So this one is the next sta most stable in color, right? So if I snap a piece to this one, a support beam, that means this support beam is going to be the same as this piece here because it's the second piece connected to this the same way that's the second piece that's connected to this. So we connect it there and it is now the same as this piece here. Now, if I connect a third beam, it's going to be the same as this piece here, and it will change this piece to be this piece. So we'll be able to add one more to the end. So let me do that. We're gonna just grab this support beam and we'll push it through there and you'll see the colors re-register. So there we go. Now it's going to go to, to a lighter orange. It's the yellow now instead of the dark orange. You can see that is now the dark orange. And then now we can snap another piece to the end there. And then that's going to go through and register. And that's going to turn dark red. Now that's only going to get us 
One additional piece. This one's eventually going to break. See it break? So how are you supposed to use the support beams then? Well, I think what you're supposed to do is use the straight beams. So if we grab one of these core wood pieces and we stack it uh, right... I want to get it right in line with it here. It just needs to go through it. It doesn't actually have to be on one of the snap points. So we do that. You can see that is now green. That's now the same as this piece here. So this piece is blue. This is green. This piece is now the same as this one. Now we attach another piece here and we attach another piece here. Now I want you to look at something here. If we take a look here, that's green, that's green. That's a little bit darker green, and then we have yellow. But if I grab a support beam and I snap them on both sides, now we have a situation where they're all green, and then that one is now yellow. So we've extended our ground support out based off of the support beams here so i think what it, that's i think that's the way that they intend it to be used now granted you can use it the, the through the side here like i showed you but using it from the side you you can't just snap it it's not going to do you any good to do that that is useless so now you're probably thinking well what about these long wood beams here so these really don't do much either if i put one here and then we extend them out and we try to put another piece on the end. After it all updates, it's going to go through, re-register everything and it's going to break. Wait patiently. And there it goes. So it, it takes it a minute to update to realize what's going on. I think it's going through and re-registering all of the pieces and recalculating. Um, but we have a, an extended time. Even if I stick a piece on the end here, it'll be the same situation. They're actually both going to break as it goes through and registers. And there goes one and there goes the other. So it took it much longer time to break but it still eventually broke. So I'm pretty sure these beams are just used for building convenience and snapping points. If we take a look here, you can see I have these on pillars, just the four corners all the way around like so. And then I have a bunch of those beams across here. But what's interesting is if you look, those beams are the same color as the, the ceiling pieces. And then we head towards the middle and we actually lost support towards the middle. This is all yellow. So adding those beams doesn't really do much, but what it does do is give us additional snap points for other pillars and it gives us easier snap points for ceiling pieces. And I think they're just there for convenience. If I snap this pillar piece here and then we take a look, now they all update. And then these have gotten just a little bit greener compared to these which are not. And if we stack those beams, so if we put one down and then we use these and bring them out from the side, you will see that they act the same way that the floor pieces do. So we're just going to stack them out here like so. And then you see we can't stack anymore. So we got one, two, three, four, the same count that we got over here with one floor piece and then four ceiling pieces. So now let's talk about stone and wood mix because this is where things get really interesting and are going to allow for so many more building options. So I was testing some stuff here and if we take a look, we have a stone wall here and every wood piece that's connected to the stone wall is a foundation piece. You can see that that one is blue and that one is blue. It does not matter what color your stone foundation piece is. You can see here we go all the way up and we end up ending in orange, but our wood piece is blue and is considered a foundation piece. And this also works with pillars. I have a stone pillar on top of it. It's green, but the wood piece that it's touching is blue, which tells the rest of this to act as though it's touching another foundation piece. So if I delete these and we take a look, that goes right back to dark red. So 
So you can use the stone found or stone pillar pieces or any of the stone pieces combined with your wood pieces to drastically increase the stability of the wood. So that means that since this is blue, we have now reset this piece here to act as a foundation piece wall that will allow us to come out an additional four. So if we attach them here, we can now go one, two, three, and four. Maybe if I can get it to snap. So now that's going to turn dark red and I won't be able to snap another one. If I try, we get nothing. It's going to eventually break. There it goes. So you can mix the stone with the wood for drastically improved support results as opposed to using just a normal wooden pillar. Because if we take a look over here, here's I just used, I'm going to delete that real quick so you can see the, the difference. So if we take a look at this one, you can see it's green and then dark green and then yellow. And then that one is green. So this one added support to this one, but it's the same as this piece here. So blue to dark green, blue to dark green, as opposed to the stone, which goes from green to so a foundation blue piece and now this is your dark green piece okay so that's pretty much all i have for this one hopefully you found it informational and helpful if you did consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when i upload other valheim videos and i don't just cover valheim i cover all kinds of different games so you never know when i'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing all right that is going to wrap it up for this episode if you like what you saw consider in that sub button i want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible you are absolutely amazing people if you'd like to join my elite crew patreon supporters please check out the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and share your support until next time thanks for watching